One of the questions that comes up a lot with LASIK is, is there a difference between nowadays versus back in the day? There are a lot of people that kind of wanted to wait for the best technology, which makes sense. You know, if you're buying a phone and you find out a newer, better phone comes out, you know, three days later, very frustrating. Even more so if it's your eyes because you're realizing I could have done something that would have been better if I would have waited longer. And so what we're going to talk about now is the difference of old versus new. And the reason that this matters is because with technology like phones and iPads and uh, cars, pick something else that's technological, uh, it's, it's in the news. It's something that you can research pretty easily. Um, with LASIK, it's kind of this small and insular world. And so these changes that are happening to eczema lasers or the ability to recover faster or have better vision, who's going to be a good candidate now that wouldn't have been before, those things can kind of happen under the radar. But the truth is, behind the scenes, over the last 25 years now, LASIK has been getting better and better and better. Uh, it, all you have to do is look at a cell phone from, you know, Saved by the Bell days when it was this giant thing next to your head and you're holding a toaster next to your face to talk on the phone for a dollar a minute versus now where you just have a literal computer in your pocket. Those same types of technological advances have been happening with laser. Um, specifically, that's in a couple of different categories. One of them that matters the most to people is the idea of regression. So regression is you had good vision. Your LASIK worked. It was awesome for two years. Uh, and then it slowly started to get worse. At first, it's barely noticeable. It's just at night that you kind of can't see as good. But over time, it gets a little bit worse. Uh, the second one of these, and these uh, we can go one by one just because they all kind of have the same general uh, issues going on with them. Uh, the second one of these is glare. So that is you have LASIK, your vision is fantastic under ideal lighting conditions. And if you have less than ideal lighting conditions, which, spoiler, is most of the world, uh, not perfect lighting conditions all the time, then you start to have glare and starbursts and halos and things like that. So the reason that both of these things were bigger issues in the past and have now been largely fixed by modern LASIK is because, um, well, it works out well. They're over here on this old side of things. So the technology, hmm, that has a C in it, doesn't it? Technology, um, the technology um, has, has changed. So there we go, that's very unnecessarily diagrammatic. Uh, the technology, that we have nowadays has changed what we can do with regression and glare. And both of those, interestingly enough, are for the same reason. It has to do with the speed of computers. I don't know if you're old enough to remember, but there was a time where you'd like boot up your computer in the morning and then go make a cup of coffee and then come back and it was just finally getting warmed up to where you could use it. And now with solid state drives and all the advances in computing technology, that stuff happens you know, nearly instantaneously. And so computing speed is also what drives the laser. And so back in the old days, what would happen is if you were gonna take a cornea, this dome of a cornea here as you're looking up at the ceiling and you were trying to make it more flat with a laser, that would be how you would fix somebody's nearsightedness. Well, the way that worked was what was called, I'll put this on the old side because it is old. broad beam technology. And uh, it was what it sounded like. The beam was broad uh, for some generations of lasers, it was a six millimeter beam, which doesn't sound like very much, but on the eye, that might as well be an acre. And so that broad beam would treat and a smoking fast laser back in the day was 15 Hertz, maybe, maybe 30 Hertz if you had the newest technology possible back then. Um, and that's 30 pulses per second, which sounds pretty fast. Um, but with the tissue that you're needing to remove as you are flattening the central cornea, um, you didn't have that much time to do that. Um, and so even though LASIK took a lot longer back then, because it was so much slower, uh, you, you really were limited by how long you could do this treatment. And so what you would do is just treat the middle cornea and you'd have this area that was treated where it was just this kind of flat table in the middle. And there were two different things about that. One. Uh, your body recognizes if something doesn't look exactly 
the way it's supposed to, uh, if there's something that is outside the norm. And so in this case, if you have a cornea that's supposed to be a dome, but instead now there's this flat table, your body is going to try to fix that. And that was the cause of regression. Over time, the top coat of epithelium on the front of your eye would slowly try to build up in order to make that cornea more rounded. It was also the reason we had glare because you would treat an area that was central and at night, your pupil would dilate past the edges of what you were looking through. So you had clear, corrected vision right in the middle, but you were also looking through this peripheral cornea that was not corrected. And it, you had to do pupillometry back then to make sure people's pupils didn't get too big at night, which was really hard because younger people, generally the people that are getting LASIK, they get big pupils at night. They got healthy eyes. Um, nowadays, we don't have to do that because the, the blend zone for the treatment, you can have this central zone uh, blended out to nine millimeters, which even if you have dilating drops in your eyes, you're not going to get these nine millimeter pupils. And so that's why glare is so much better now. That is possible because of the technology that we have now. So now with modern laser, with the, the fanciest, fastest one we have, it's 500 hertz, it's 500 pulses per second. And so what was done with that was not just to say, okay, this treatment would have been you know, a minute long and now we're gonna have this treatment take one second uh, instead. Instead, what we did was uh, there's this new technology, putting it on the new side, called Flying Spot. It's a whimsical name. And, uh, and, and the reason that it, it's called a flying spot is because instead of this broad six millimeter beam that gets changed with different apertures, instead this spot is small. It's less than a millimeter because you can treat individual spots uh, and, and because the laser is so much faster, it's the difference between painting a wall with a, a broad, broad roller versus a fine paintbrush. You can treat thing, things so much more smoothly. And so what you can do is you can get these much nicer blend zone and that keeps the natural curve of the cornea way more precise. And that does two things. One, you have a curve to your cornea that's much more natural. And so regression, it's not that it does not exist anymore. It's just now super rare instead of being something that was common. And now glare, because you have these big blend zones, it's not something that we, that we really see anymore. Matter of fact, uh, a study was done to look at night vision with LASIK compared to contact lenses and LASIK came out more favorably. Um, that would not have been the case back in the day, but there's been changes in technology that make a lot of the worries that people had before no longer things that they have to deal with.